We are joined in the Media Center by our Pro Stock winner of the Lucas Oil Winter Nationals, presented by Protect the Harvest. This is Erica Enders, her 34th career victory, but first Winter Nationals. Erica won from the number one qualifying position. She took down Christian Quadra in the first round, Dallas Glenn in the second round, Greg Anderson in the semifinals, and then beat her teammate Aaron Stanfield in the final round. Erica, walk us through your race day. Uh, race day was awesome. I mean, it was really challenging when I looked at the ladder this morning. I uh, had my teammate Christian Quadra first round, uh, two juggernaut KV cars second and third round, and then my teammate Aaron Stanfield in the finals. So, um, you know, not a not a walkthrough by any means. Some interesting stuff happened out there today. Uh, in the semifinals, the track was really loose uh, for both Greg and myself. I, I guess he was just a little bit looser. But um, And then in the final round, Aaron had to change an engine before the finals. And... Uh, I don't like to talk negative, but like I went up there and I pre-staged and I always take a deep breath when I pre-stage and the way that the weather changed, my glasses completely fogged up and uh, I was scared of going red because we were 12, 13, and 16 today. So I just, I missed the tree. I wanted to keep all my lights under 20 today, but three out of four is not bad. So uh, we were able to park the Million Performance Hot Rod in the winter circle. And like you said, we have never won here at the, almost said US Nationals, at the Winter Nationals. And to be able to secure that 900th Pro Stock victory with that special Hearst shifter trophy was pretty awesome let's open it up to members from the media members of the media josh hatchett nhra uh erica you talked uh, the other night about significance of some of these special wins that you've had obviously u.s nationals you got the the special one in in vegas for the 150th i believe and then this one for pro Sox 900th um to have your name associated with that you know forever now uh, what, 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 do, what do those kind of victories mean to you uh, they mean an awful lot as a as a kid who was first and foremost a fan of pro stock you know most kids you ask them what they want to be when they grow up and you know aside from astronauts and lawyers and doctors if you're talking about drag racing you want to drive top fuel and it was always pro stock for me i loved um i loved the fact that you left with a clutch and that you had to shift the car and um, so that, that meant a lot to me, and to have such big dreams and aspirations as a young kid, and then driving junior dragsters for nine years, and racing in the Lucas Oil Series for five, before coming into pro stock, um, you know, we've accomplished way more than I ever thought we would be able to. So to be able to leave our mark on the class, no matter how much longer this career lasts, is something that's really special to me, because coming in, you know, you hear the naysayers being the only female, she's just going to be a flash in the pan, oh, her daddy's money, blah, blah, you hear all this stuff. And we've stuck it out and had a lot of tenacity. We've been through way more valleys than we've had peaks. And this is my 18th season in pro stock. So this win is very significant. I mean, you treat every race day the same, but this 900th victory for pro stock means a lot to me. Phil Birch, National Dragster. When you look at the event as a whole, not many boxes you didn't check. I mean, number one and two qualifiers, elite cars both in the final round, beat Greg Anderson in the semifinals, beat the guy Dallas Glenn who wants to be the best starting line driver, take your place. Could it have gone much better? I, I don't think so. Aside from the final round, me not cracking the tree the way that I wanted to with some just outside distractions. Um, yeah, it was a great day. I mean, to to put the elite performance, elite motorsports cars in the one two position after qualifying was all said and done. Aaron Stalefield and I said, you know, this is how we want to finish one two. And we were able to both work our way to the final round. He, he has a, a super fast hot rod. TJ's car is really fast, too. During testing, he was uh, he was killing it. So. Um, just getting behind on those first two qualifying runs for him were were interesting, but yes, uh, this race has been has been awesome. Especially leading up to this two weeks ago, I didn't know if I was going to be able to drive yet without the release from my doctor with my arm. And um, my guys hooked it up with a really awesome shifter that gave me more leverage. And um, coming in here with just two test runs since the World Finals, it just I couldn't have asked for a better weekend. Could you talk real quickly about your arm and what you went through? Sure. Um, last. August, I tore a couple of tendons in my arm, uh, just lifting something and turning my arm weird. And we finished the season and through that process, August, September, October, November, I just destroyed the tendon uh, across my elbow. So uh, as soon as the season was over, I had surgery on it to repair it. And he said, I won't have my strength back for six to eight months. But um, if I go through my therapy, he would hopefully be able to release me before Gainesville. And I went back a week before we headed out here and I was like, look, I can lift this, I can do this. And he's like, well, I can tell you're not taking no for an answer. So, um, you know, the pain is pretty okay. Um, I'm sure I'll be sore tomorrow, but uh, it's, I'm just glad to be in the race car, honestly. Lee Craft, Monday morning racer for Competition Plus Power Hour. Erica, Greg made some 
stern comments concerning the prep, and you just mentioned the looseness in the semifinal rounds. For the Nitro guys, we've heard nothing but praise of the new track. So is it an issue with the track overall or a matter of prep itself? And was it unique to Sunday, or was it throughout the rounds of qualifications as well? No, I, I had no issues during qualifying or during eliminations. Uh, rounds one and two and four, there was no issue with the track being loose for some reason. And, and granted, we're first out. Greg and I were first out, and that's something that him especially, but myself uh, as well, not being used to that. So, um, you know, the cooler temperatures, uh, we require a different track prep than the Nitro guys. Um, where we get loose is from high gear on, which is 660 to 1320. Well, their track's over at 1,000 feet. They don't want it sprayed past there because it tears up their tires, understandably. So um, I think the track grinding and the, the surface prep was awesome. It just was kind of one of those deals that it was just loose, and sometimes you have to deal with it, unfortunately. Erica, you were pretty emotional on that top end, you know, the, the, like a, a take no prisoners, you know, we're going after it this year. Can you speak to that and kind of where where that came from? And, and it seems like it's going to add a lot of kind of excitement to the glass this year. <laughs> I think so. I mean, you know, you listen to, to all the talk behind your back um, from your competitors, from their crew members, from their wives, and uh, you just kind of listen to it, right? And, and you, in one sense, are like, okay, whatever, their opinion means nothing. But it kind of does a little bit, like it adds fuel to the fire. And I came out this weekend, I told my guys, there's no more nice Erica this year. Um, we don't need any more friends and, and I'm going for it, man. Like you never know what season's gonna be your last. And if this is my last, I want it to be something that I can proudly hang my hat on. So needless to say, we've done this for 18 years, right? And you're gonna have your off days. I know the battles that are ahead of us and all we can do is prepare the best that we can. But um, the fire is lit under my entire team's butt, and we are ready to go. Out there with Alan Reinhardt, you referenced, and I only caught half of it, but someone who had said you're going to be, you know, washed up or something. Yeah. But when I, when I took, and I didn't get who that was or where it came from, but what I took was that you take that energy and you use it and turn it into motivation. Correct, yeah. I mean, you take the negativity that comes from those people who have accomplished absolutely nothing and they judge you from the sofa in their mother's bank's basement. And uh, I used it to flip it positive because this morning I read his comments. Uh, one of my guys showed me, he's like, yeah, you're familiar with him, we'll talk about it later. But he, he said, she's old, she's washed up, she's no longer the, the driver she was on the starting line. And I said, okay, watch this, hold on. So we were 13, 16, 12. Uh, final round, not so great, but three or four, and uh, again, he ain't done nothing. Mm -hmm. Any other questions for our Winter Nationals champ? I know you guys, there was an engine swap in the pits. Right. So talk about uh, if there's anything that we didn't get to. Bobby Bennett, you just came in. Do you have any questions for Erica? No, I've already asked him. He's already asked his questions. Is there anything that we have yet to address that you'd like to put out there or uh, talk about before we let you go? Well, I just I want to touch on the pro stock class as a whole. Um, you know, our toughest competitors out there, KV Racing, um, they have worked hand in hand with Elite Motorsports, Richard Freeman, to make the class what it is right now, to make it more affordable for people to come in. And, and I was talking about it at Driver Introductions this morning, how the landscape has completely changed. When, when I rounded that corner for my first qualifying session in 2005, I will never forget the feeling that I had looking at the fans in the grandstands and the TV cameras stuffed in your face. And I was racing against a bunch of older guys, and now the landscape has completely changed. There's Greg Anderson, myself, and we're taking on this, this class of kids, which I think is so cool because Pro Stock has always been your, you know, factory hot rod, old guys deal. And now we have have we have all these kids' interest in the class, and it's, again, more affordable because of what Richard Freeman and KB Racing guys have done. Quick note. Oh, Bobby jumping in. Go ahead. Uh, I, I guess it's more of a statement than it is a question. Uh, those guys who raced in the 70s and 80s, if you took your stats that you've accomplished back then, you'd be legendary status too. Thank so you. that's that's just something that that we you're a legend of this era, and you will be. I mean, I know you, you can't admit it or you'll well, get beat up on the internet, but <laughs> I, for, for those of us who see and understand what you've accomplished, uh, you are moving into legendary status. Well, thank you for saying that. I, I take a lot of pride in, in how we do this, and um, one day I'll be able to lay my head down and, and know 
the feats that we accomplished when the cards were stacked against us, and that makes me proud. Thank you for saying that. The last time we saw you stand on the stage with Alan Reinhardt like that, in the center of the track, surrounded by fans, everybody out in the middle of the track, kind of a wild situation. It was Arizona 2020, big win by you, before the world changed, and now here we are, we're starting to get back to normal, things are different, and you're on stage in the middle of the track, surrounded by fans again. When you think about it like that, talk about that road that you've traveled, that we've all traveled together. Well, in Arizona, we didn't know that the world was about to stop turning as we know it. And uh, again, like I mentioned, you never know when that moment will be your last. So I, I always try to soak it in, and I'm thankful I have my sister out here to document everything with photos and video. But um, to be surrounded by a sea of people who wholeheartedly love our sport the way that we do is is pretty cool. And, um, you know, I was able to see, like, the jumbo I still call it the Winston Vision. That's how old I am. But <laughs> the Jumbotron in the background, and, you know, I'm on stage surrounded by these people. It's just, it's a dream come true, because in my mind, I'm still just a kid with, with big aspirations, and we've been able to accomplish a lot, but the... The good Lord has blessed me, and I'm, I'm definitely thankful for this life. Erica, congratulations on your Winter Nationals victory. Good luck in Arizona just days from now. Got one, Thank more you. Question. one more question. Oh, one more question. One more question. doesn't mean anything now. I was going to say a follow-up comment from I. Courtney Anders is speaking, I think everybody. We must listen. You might already be a legend, not coming to Already be. Courtney says you are nice. already a legend. Yes. She's biased, yes. But no, she's, it is my first Winter Nationals, so we're really happy. But thank you guys for covering our sport. We, uh, we appreciate you being here.